Hi, I'm Don and I'm going to be leading you through a short tutorial on how to get started using Mechanize and Nokogiri, both great Ruby libraries for doing web scraping. I'm going to quickly talk about uh, what Mechanize and Nokogiri are and then I'll get right into showing you how to get uh, started using them. So Nokogiri is a parser for XML and HTML you can use it to select uh, to traverse HTML and XML documents to get access information out of those documents you can select that information using XPath which is a W3C standard and also CSS style selection so if you're familiar with CSS you'll know that the most specific markup wins and you can then select elements using a very specific markup you can also use Nokogiri to um, examine a document and tell you if there are any errors in the markup. So you can use it to ensure a well-formed markup. Incidentally, Nokogiri, no, Nokogiri in Japanese is a type of handsaw that cuts on the pull stroke. All right, Mechanize is a Ruby library that enables stateful uh, interactions with the web. So you create an object that works like a web browser. It handles cookies and sessions so you can do authentication to websites. It'll handle redirects for you so it'll automatically follow uh, redirects when the uh, server uh, gives you one of those 302 codes. Uh, you can have a link history so you can list the pages you visited and keep track of them inside of your object. It'll follow links. You can submit forms. It's a full featured um, library for interacting with the web. It originally started out in 2002 as a Perl module and incidentally it's also implemented in Python. Alright, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, before we dive into some examples, let's talk about the environment that I'm using. So I'm using Fedora 18, 64-bit, uh, but more importantly, I'm using Ruby 193. I'm also using the Ruby Environment Manager, which I'll get into in a second. And I'm using Mechanize 2.6 and Nokogiri 1.5. So you could, you could install the gems using your systems package manager so um, I'm using Fedora so that would be yum if you're using Ubuntu that'd be apt-get but you could also install them using uh, the Ruby environment manager or RVM RVM allows you to have multiple versions of Ruby installed on your system as well as uh, gem sets it's a great tool for managing different environments especially if you've got two different Ruby projects uh, going on on your machine and you need to maintain two different uh, versions. So let's take a quick look on how this works. Alright, I've made my terminal larger so you can follow along. Just a quick aside uh, with the Ruby Environment Manager to check to see what version of Ruby you're using. You can just do RVM list. As you can see, I'm set to use Ruby 2, but I want to use Ruby 193 for this project so I can just say RVMs use uh, 1.9.3 I also want to make sure that I have my gems installed so I'm just going to do gem install uh, Nokugiri mechanize and for one of my examples I'm using the mail gem so you can now uh, take a moment to install that too There's, there's more documentation for RVM available on the website, and I also have some uh, more notes on my project class project documentation as well. Alright, so very quickly, let's just verify that the version of Ruby that we're using is 193. 
and we're ready to start. This example is to illustrate the differences between traversing an HTML document with XPath or versus CSS. The HTML document I'm going to uh, search is the CS website. Here it is, but uh, we're going to look at the source of this. So what I'm going to do is show you an example, a uh, quick example that I wrote up that illustrates this. So here it is. As you can see, I'm using Nogogiri. I'm also using, uh, I'm not using Mechanize for this, I'm using OpenURI because all I need to do for this example is download the uh, page source. So what this does is I uh, call open on the page source which actually returns a temp file uh, containing the page source and then uh, call Nokogiri the Nokogiri HTML method which is a convenience method in Nokogiri to parse, parse HTML. So the temp file looks like, let's see, here it is. We'll cat it, and sh this is just the page source, nothing tricky here. And the part we're interested in is the site nav. So these are the headings along the top of the CS website that allow you to navigate the page. Home, department, undergrad, graduate courses, etc. Okay, so in the first example, I take a uh, doc and uh, I just call the CSS method. I'm interested in a div with the ID of site nav. Once I have this, I uh, can look at the uh, underlying code, which as you can see is just an unordered list with a bunch of list elements. And then I can go through each one and print out the text. Uh, for XPath, it looks a little different. I call the XPath, XPath method on doc, and I'm looking for an ID containing uh, site nav as the uh, value. Then I'm going to look at all the unordered lists or uh, at unordered lists and, and grab each list item. Uh, this is just going to allow me to specify each list item and then I'm going to print those out. As you can see it just looks like this. Okay, in this example I'm going to show you how to scrape a Craigslist page um, and search for an item to buy and then send you the results. So we can look at the cl.rb example and look at how I put this together. So in this example I'm requiring Mechanize but not Nokogiri. When you require Mechanize you get Nokogiri for free. Here I'm also requiring the mail gem so I can send myself results from my search. So I've uh, defined a class, I've specified a URI because I'm only interested in, in the local Craigslist. I have uh, a constructor that uh, creates a new mechanized agent and gets the URI and stores it in a class attribute called page. Alright, so I've got a method here to search for something. Um, it is going to I'm going to grab the first form on the page, which just happens to be the search form. I'm going to uh, add this. I'm going to fill out the form. The uh, form field that I'm adding, I'm I'm selecting is called query. So I'm just going to fill it out, and you can address forms like arrays, which is really nice. And then I'm going to submit the form. It's that easy. So then I'm going to grab the results and using an XPath selector for the uh, search row. I'm going to change that uh, output to HTML. So I'm just chaining some methods here, as you can see. And then I'm sending the results to myself. Uh, send results is just a quick wrapper around the mail uh, um, gem. I'm just specifying my mail address, uh, some content encoding, and what the subject of the mail is. And so down here you can see I it's as easy, calling this is as easy as chaining these commands together and I'm going to search for kayaks in the Santa Barbara area. So I can run this. I'm not going to run it because I, in my testing I just hit Craigslist a bunch of times. I don't want to make anybody mad. But I can give you the search results for my last run and here they are in my email. So as you can see I've got all the latest 
results for kayaking equipment. The great thing about this is it preserves the links so I can click on any of these, it'll take me to Craigslist and I can see what's, uh, and I can read more about the item for sale. Okay, for this last example I'm going to show you how to wrap uh, the functionality of a web page with an API. So I'm going to use the uh, College of Engineering's account maintenance uh, website uh, to show you this, to show you how I can change my shell with a mechanized script. So normally to change your user shell you would have to log into the account maintenance website. Now when I wrote the account maintenance website years ago I had no idea that I would ever want to access it with an API so I didn't build in this functionality. Um, so this is kind of a nice test. We have uh, bin tcsh as my login shell. Normally I'd have to log in, so I'd have to authenticate against an LDAP server. I'd have to change my login shell and then I would choose one of these shells off the list. I don't want to change it right now. What I want to do is show you how to do it in Mechanize. So I'm going to hit back and I'm going to hit log out. Okay, so over here in Mechanize we have an update shell RB file. Let me show you how this works. So I have a class. The URI is the login page for the account maintenance. My uh, constructor looks very similar to my Craigslist example. Just getting the URI. But now I'm going to have to log in, so I have to authenticate. So I'm going to grab the first form on the page, which is the login form. And again, I'm going to just address the form as if it were uh, an, an associative array. So the field names for the form happen to be called data maintain username with the brackets. This is not any special uh, XPath or CSS syntax. This is just happens to be the syntax um, of the forms. I populate these two values and I submit the form. Next I'm going to call update. So uh, earlier you saw me having to navigate to the change login shell page. This is how I'm going to do it in Mechanize. So I can actually simulate the clicking of a link. So um, let me sp uh, speak, about, speak about this one from the inside out. So I'm going to specify some uh, that I'm looking for text called change login shell. So um, I'm matching uh, as soon as I find that, then I'm going to return that and click on it. So uh, once I do that, it's going to go ahead and go to that page. Then I'm going to find the first form on the page, which you already saw, which is a list of shells. And then I'm going to um, do some quick uh, checking on the data that was passed into my script. So I'm not going to set it if it's not one of the shells that's listed. So I'm just going to loop through the shells. Uh, so here I am, I'm looping through a select, an HTML select. I'm picking the shell if it's there and I'm setting it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to submit the form. And this is how I would call it. So I have my username, uh, fake password uh, for this example, and the shell I want, which is bin bash. So let's go ahead and run this. comes back. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to SSH to BART in Cecil and I'm going to check the value of my login shell to see that it worked. And sure enough, here I am and now I'm using the bash shell. If we log back in to the account maintenance page, we can see that it's changed there as well. But there we have bin bash. So you can see it's pretty easy to wrap this type of functionality with an API and I'll be doing more of that in my final project. Thank you.